forgive me <laughs> veronica okola yeah. and i'll let you introduce yourself tell us what you do yeah karibu okay just as you have been told my name is veronica okola and i call myself menstrual hygiene advocate because i'm passionate generally about girl child empowerment and menstrual health Apart from that, I'm working with the Ministry of Health on a project called Tujulishane. Na Tunajulishane on maternal health, family planning, sexual gender-based violence, mm -hmm. and adolescence and abstinence. So you go around the country teaching ladies and communities about all these things? No. Okay. We have doctors, gynecologists, mm -hmm. counselors, standby. So we work like in form of a call center. If you have a problem, we have a toll-free number. You can always reach us anytime, weekdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And public holidays and weekend, we work from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So apart from uh, your job at the Ministry of Health, which is a very good job, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can tell us where this journey began of being a menstrual hygiene advocate. Okay, the journey began when I was in campus. I used to be a student leader, vice president. And if you look at the cases, like I can refer to the case where a girl in Bomet County committed suicide because of due to lack of pads. And also in Baringo County, there was uh, an incident that was brought even to the media where girls were missing out on going to school because of lack of sanitary pads. So like I saw there was an opportunity and there was a gap to be filled in our society and communities. Mm -hmm. So I did like a, a little research on how much, how much girls lack the sanitary towels. And my research was on Nairobi slums majorly. And I realized most of the girls were using rugs, piece of mattresses, tissue papers, because they were not, they were ashamed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I came up with a program that was called Keep a Girl in School. That was in June 2019 when I was still in campus. And it was tough starting. You, you can just come up with a project and you don't know where to start. Where do you get the sanitary towels? Who are your audiences? How do you know that this person lacks sanitary towels? So I came, uh, I met with a few friends who are, I shared the idea with them and they supported it. Okay. So we planned for our first project where we were partnering with the local community leaders, my MPs. Yeah, and we did our first project at Rarida constituency, which was successful due. We partnered with the MP and Esther Basari came from Nairobi to Rarida, which was quite supportive. Yeah. Okay. So what inspires you to do this uh, to do this menstrual health aging? Because there's so many other issues that you can deal with, but why menstrual health hygiene like what inspires you to wake up in the morning and be this person that you are okay i feel like i have the right information and it costs me nothing to pass the right information to people who lack mm -hmm. the right information for example if you during as i carry out the project i realized like most of the girls they get their their main source of information on menstrual health is from internet not forgetting that Whatever is in the internet, what applies to you during the effects that you find during your menstruation are different from mine. We have different hormones acting differently. So, but the internet will give you like, just the general information. So I measured on this and did a lot of research and I realized like, I have a lot of information at disposal. What if I help somebody who does not have this access to the information? Okay. okay. It cost me nothing. And maybe you can tell us what menstrual hygiene is all about. Maybe to naskianga tu jina na tu jini ina usunini. Okay, menstrual hygiene, it, it's quite broad, not that broad though. Mainly when I do my events, I normally just teach girls how to generally keep clean, sex education. It's not, it's not just about the menstruation period. You should also teach them how to change, how often you're supposed to change the pads. Because you realize if you overstay with your pads, you, get, you are likely to get infections like yeast, fungal. And also there are different types of pads, sanitary towels, that when you use can react with your body and, can, and may not react with my body. Maybe you can give us your education, Kia, say like oh, yeah. how many, how so many? For yes. example, let yes. me say for those who use rugs, because these are the most affected people, you find that maybe the type of rug that you're using, maybe it's oversized. 
the moment you use an overseas drugs, it gives you the friction in between your thighs and you likely to suffer itches and scratches within your thighs. That is one thing. So like medically what I normally do during the menstrual hygiene education is just general cleanliness during your menstruation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how you're supposed to wash yourself during the menstruation and even generally past menstruation mm -hmm. as ladies. Okay. Yeah. For example, if you use the if you use like scented soaps, it may affect your vagina. So you see like such informations, they are pretty but they are lacking. Most ladies want to me vaginal wash or whatever. But you see some are bleaching agents. You may end up you bleaching your vagina without knowing. Yeah, so you see, like, there are pretty informations, but they are lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have, like, an organization that goes around the country teaching girls about all this? Yeah, right now, we have a CBO. I've partnered with, like, five friends, and we registered a CBO called Semanami organization. And we are dealing with not just menstruation hygiene, but we are also dealing with generally youth empowerment. We are nurturing talents. Like, we have an upcoming academy. So like, if you have a kiddo at home, you can register her or he to our academy. Mm. Yeah. And maybe you can tell us the structure of your organization. Like how do, you, how do you organize yourself? Because I don't think you wake up in the morning and decide today we are just going to you know, teach people about menstrual hygiene. Yeah, yeah, true. yeah. how we is normally, the organization? We normally have a calendar of activities which we follow up on. So... Like right now, the upcoming events that we have is the menstrual hygiene day, that is 28th of May. Okay. So like right now, what we are focusing on, on May generally, it's a menstrual hygiene month. So like right now, we are carrying campaigns on menstrual hygiene. Mm. That is example. We normally have calendar of events. And do you have like areas where you prioritize to visit or what's your so, niche? Okay, before I used to go like across the country, I used to partner with leaders, but since we registered the CBO, CBO is a community-based organization. So right now we are majorly based in Dagoritikon, Nando Slums. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how is the how are people re receiving the information? Are they accepting it or are they shunning it away? They are accepting it and they are quite grateful because I can say I have a lot of success stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once you go to a location, yeah. what do you do? Like on arrival on a location. First, we do, we have to, prior to visiting a place, you have to make arrangements. You have to get the audiences. You have to mobilize for the sanitary towels. You have to get a team because you cannot do it alone. You see, like, if I come to mentor you and you just see Veronica alone, it's not enough. But when I come with you and I come with another person, you share your mind, I share my mind different stories. Mm -hmm. It's quite encouraging. Okay. So, like, I have to make arrangements on my team. I have to make arrangements on how to mobilize the sanitary towels. I have to make arrangements for the venue and the audiences. Okay. Yeah. And okay. And are you self-funded or you get sponsorship from other people? Uh, like I said, we partner with okay. friends and with wishes, but most of the times we do contribute amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of all the things that you do from campaigns to mentorship to sex education, what will you consider your strength in your organization? menstrual hygiene menstrual hygiene yeah. so it's more of the education and teaching people yeah teaching people okay. empowerment empowerment yeah. and so far how many areas have you covered okay so far i can say i've covered around 21 schools across the country and in Nando slums alone that we started last year we have hosted like six events and during each event we all we always give people like three packets of sanitary towels and Underwears and also face masks. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes if we mobilize enough resources, we give them unga. Yeah. And uh, during your journey, what would you say are some of the effects of low, uh, of having no information about menstrual hygiene? Okay, I can say most girls they suffer ridicule from on during their menses from their male counterparts. Okay. I would appreciate each and every organization that are carrying out campaigns. We have the hashtag of period positivity. We have hashtag on end period shame because we are making steps. 
I can say for sure that where we were yesterday is different from where we are today. So I can also say like during our campaigns, after talking to the girls, we normally have even their parents calling back. Because you see the topics like sex education, especially now that the students are at home, the teenagers are at home. As parents, I think we, we need to talk to our teenagers about not just menstruation hygiene, but also sex education. Teach them on how they can protect themselves from STIs, prevention of HIV, HPV, you get. I have a question on that, on sex education. So yeah. you teach your children on how to protect themselves from all these diseases and yeah. uh, have protective sex, right? Yeah. Uh, is it uh, the the first thing you teach? Um, uh, you know these are teenagers. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, so funza, how to protect themselves or how to abstain? Teach your child how to abstain. Okay. And as a mother, I think not just a mother, but even a parent, you should make you should be a friend to your teenage daughter or son. Talk to them about sex education because if you avoid it, someone else will do it on your behalf. And what's the proper way of teaching about sex education? Like, what information should be this should be you know put out there? First, first and foremost, the first important step is to be a friend to your to your kid. Okay. Through that, they will open up. They will tell you even if they start experiencing changes, they will tell you. They will let you know before they let somebody else know. For example, if I have a problem, the first person I would approach is my best friend. Be that best friend that your kid needs. And once they open up, you'll be able to advise them that if you do this, these are the repercussions for your actions. For, as a matter of fact, a teenager is not just ready for the repercussions of sex, mentally, financially, socially, emotionally. So you should teach them abstinence. That is the core thing. Mm -hmm. But in a case where you cannot always run away from the truth, you know your child is sexually active, but you're avoiding the story. You continue teaching abstinence and yet they're having sex. Mm. So you see like such cases, teach them that if, even if they have unprotected sex and end up using like B2, they still have chances of getting STI, HPV, and HIV AIDS. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's so really like, nice. Be open to your kid and let's not live a lie. Mm. If they're sexually active, tell them the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah. And do you think Kenya, Kenya, Kenya is there, is taking that step of? Okay, now I'm commenting as a person, not as a, an employee of Ministry of Health and stuff. Uh, yes, 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 as a person. Do you I think, think as a country, yes. we are living a lie. Okay. Yeah. We are running away from the fact that our teenagers are having sex. That's why we have the highest number of pregnancies in the country, teenage pregnancy, not just pregnancy, teenage pregnancies in the country. Because we assume that legal age for sex is 18 years old. Then where do we get a 10 year old getting pregnant? Because we assume they are not having sex, but they are having sex. So to me, I think it's high time we walk the conversation as a country and we don't run away from the truth mm. because the reality is our teenagers are exposed to pornography internet they are they have a lot of information at their disposal that you cannot control yeah and what's the role of the parents in menstrual hygiene and sex education sorry the role yeah. of a parent in menstrual health and sex education okay as a parent just as i told you once you are free with your kid you give them that environment where they can open up you should teach them even how to use sanitary towel. You should teach them not to be ashamed that they are having periods. You should teach them that periods makes you a girl. Without that periods, you will also feel incomplete. You should just make them and build their self-esteem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what would you consider is good menstrual hygiene? A good menstrual hygiene is where you have access to sanitary towels. Mm -hmm whether free or not free, but you can easily access sanitary towels. You have the information on different types of pads. Like we know that you have cups, menstrual cups. We have the reusable, the reusable pads that you can use and wash. We also have the tampons now, and we also have the wings, the normal pads that everyone is using. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So like you're supposed to know like we have, we have pads which are normally reacting to people. 
which makes people assume that period is acidic because if there are certain parts which are which have gel that when you use the you end up in on our show up with skin yeah mm -hmm. so like you should have such informations and you know like if you go for cheaper alternatives they may also affect you you may have urinary infections you may have yeast infections so if you have such in fact informations at your disposal i believe like it's a, a success story mm -hmm. yeah then also how to wash yourself how to keep yourself clean as a girl okay yeah so i believe that through this journey of being an advocate for menstrual hygiene you faced different challenges sure. maybe you can name some of them okay the main challenges especially during my campaign when you're giving out pads you realize that we normally give like three packets sometimes depending on how much we've mobilized but at least we always give three packets of sanitary towels and underwear and face mask which is just a, a, an added token so you realize most of the girls once you give them the three packets when they get back home they share them with their parents and sisters some they sell them off because you give me a sanitary towel and i don't have food yeah how is it even helping me maybe i have to wait for end month or maybe I, this month i can use one packet next month i cannot wait when come and see nachakula so some they sell them off that is a big challenge another challenge of faced is mobilizing of resources you realize most of the times we partner with our friends and willing organizations so the if i come to you to sponsor my event today you know i cannot come to you like every day so it needs a lot of networking a lot of energy <laughs> commitment and if you're doing other things you also have to survive as a person you have to go to work it becomes a challenge okay yeah. but despite those challenges i'm sure you also have something positive that makes you go on every day yeah the success stories okay. that is what keep me going mm -hmm. once the impact that i've made that would sort keep me going mm -hmm. like for example if i visited ngando slums today and i gave 900 calls pads i feel satisfied i get satisfaction out of the impact okay. of that yeah mm -hmm. so maybe as we wind up you can share a little bit of advice to a girl who is watching you right now or if you wanted to reach out to someone who who wants to help you if someone who wants to help you wants to reach out to you maybe you can share your your social media handles where they can find you okay Okay so to the young girls teenagers and even the girls of our age what I can tell you like if you have the information at your disposal never hesitate to share with your neighbor if you have like an extra sanitary towel you don't have to be rich to help you can help starting from your neighbor and to reach me out you can find me on Facebook Veronica Cola Twitter Veronica Cola yeah Okay thank you so much Veronica Kola for uh, sparing your time and joining us in this m important discussion I feel like menstrual hygiene is one of those things that we should know much forward and yeah. advocate for because it's something that concerns our body yeah. and without uh, having a healthy body we can't do anything we can't even work or make money sure. so uh, thank you so much not only for joining us but for what you're doing to the society thank you okay. and just before I wind up yes we are i told you we are having like a campaign yes especially right now there are a lot of cases of gender-based violence that's true you can always reach us out on a toll-free number 0800-702-722 okay maybe you can repeat that again so that people can get it okay 0800-722-022 okay thank you so it's much it's called julishane I consultation is free and everything we offer is free of charge okay asante sana asante sana so that was veronica who is an advocate for menstrual hygiene and she's doing great 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 work in the society by educating girls on the importance of menstrual hygiene so right about now we're going to go for a short break like in msibandu can send anywhere we're going to get back with a very interesting discussion from the one and only kayesu uh, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel and at underscore Mutete. Yes.